Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, and the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm going to be talking to you about some interesting research titled A Matching Adjusted Indirect Comparison, or MAIC, of the efficacy and safety of a calibrutinib versus xanabrutinib in relapsed or refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia. This was research that was led by Dr. Adam Katai out of Ohio State with an international group of fellow researchers, and they presented this comparison between a calibrutinib and xanabrutinib at the American Society of Clinical Oncology, or ASCO's annual meeting in 2023 in Chicago. What was their bottom line finding? Acalabrutinib and xanabrutinib have similar excellent efficacy in relapsed or refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL. However, acalabrutinib had a lower rate of serious hemorrhage, hypertension, and the need for dose reduction due to adverse events compared to xanabrutinib. Let's look at the background. We all know that BTK inhibitors have revolutionized the treatment of CLL. All three approved BTK inhibitors have similar impressive efficacy, so treatment choices are often guided by which drug is safer and better tolerated. Direct comparisons between acalabrutinib and xanabrutinib are lacking, so this research was an effort to start answering the questions about safety and tolerability of those two. Let's look at the methods and participants. Match-adjusted indirect comparison, MAIC, is a method to compare data from different trials. This is a fraught area of research, and this type of research is imperfect. For this MAIC, individual patient data on patients taking acalabrutinib was taken from the ASCEND trial, and they were weighed to match xanabrutinib data from the ALPINE trial. We have information on both of these trials on the website. The weighted variables included, and get ready for a long list, sex, ECOG. If you're unfamiliar with ECOG, ECOG stands for the European Co 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 Cooperative, let me say that again, European Cooperative Oncology Group, ECOG, and it's a measure of the patient's ability to care for themselves in daily activities and physical activities, just simple things like walking, working, eating. Another uh, weighted factor was, did they have bulky disease, if they had prior chemo? They looked at FISH, 11Q deletion, 17P deletion. They looked at TP53 without deletion, 17P. They looked at IGHV status. They looked at what region of the country these people were from. They looked at their age. They looked at um, uh, prior lines of therapy, and they looked at their rise stage. So what were the results? Progression-free survival, or PFS, was similar for both drugs. There were similar risks for those on either drugs of developing any grade 3 or greater adverse events. So just to remind you, a grade 3 adverse event or side effects are serious and interfere with a person's ability to do basic things like eating or getting dressed without help. Grade 3 events often require medical intervention. Grade Four adverse events, by definition, result in being hospitalized. And a grade five event is medical jargon or a euphemism for the patient dying. So there were similar risks of grade three or greater events between both drugs, suggesting they're quite similar. There were similar risks of atrial fibrillation. There were si similar risks of grade three or higher atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter and there were similar risks of grade three or higher hemorrhage. And there was a similar risk of any adverse event leading to discontinuing the drugs. So the two drugs were very similar in that sense. There were some differences, however. Those taking a calibrutinib had a lower risk than those taking a xanabrutinib the following, what was called a serious adverse event, any grade three, any grade in any grade three or greater hypertension, any grade of hemorrhage, so this could be a very minor thing like some minor bruising, in any adverse event 
that led to dose reduction. So what are our conclusions? Progression-free survival is similar for both drugs, but a calibrutinib led to a fewer specific adverse events. However, as I said, this MIIC is at best an imperfect way to compare therapies, and we really don't know the validity of these results and we, until we do a head-to-head -head comparison between the two drugs. That kind of comparison has already been done for each of these medications compared to ibrutinib. And in both cases, both drugs cause CLL patients less problems than the ibrutinib. However, there are reasons to be doubtful that we will ever see a trial comparing a calibrutinib to a xanabrutinib. If you want to read more details on the ASCO abstract from 2023, uh, we have it on a link on our website to a matching adjusted indirect comparison, or MAKE, M-A-I-C, of the efficacy and safety of a calibrutinib versus xanabrutinib in relapsed or refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Thanks so much for listening. Stay strong. We are all in this together.